In the previous episode on modular randomness, we talked about stepped and fluctuating random voltages, and we also talked about the beauty of shaping such voltages through probability distribution. Today we will keep exploring more ways of controlling the behavior of our random values through two more SAPEL sections, the quantized random voltages. Coming up! So we now know that the sample and hold circuit picks a new value from a noise signal at every clock impulse. And we also know that it is possible to control the average magnitude of such voltages through the probability distribution. However, this control defines just a range in which our values can sit, but in such a range in the analog domain there can still be an infinite number of values. And this is where the quantization process comes in handy. To better understand the meaning and purpose of quantized random voltages, we need to refer once again to the booklet 266, which was the first module to implement two of such circuits. The booklet quantized the random voltages allowed the musician to limit the random voltages to a precise set of values. Instead of having any value within a voltage range, we are thus left with a limited number of possible stepped voltages. They are still random, meaning that we cannot tell which one is gonna come up next, but we can be sure that it will belong to our selected pool. The process of approximating every possible analog voltage to a finite grid of values is a digital one, and it is called quantization. In the booklet 266 we can define two parallel sets of values through a knob that picks a number from 1 to 6. Such a number is then used to calculate two quantization grids according to two different mathematical operations, which are 2 to the nth power and n plus 1. For example, if the knob's value is 3, the first quantization grid will have 8 values, which is 2 to the third power, while the second one will have just 4 values, which is 3 plus 1. By changing the n value, we can thus select how many voltages we want to output, and such a flexible tool can play a huge role whenever a further degree of control randomization is needed in our patches. These are our quantized random voltage generators, so two per section. As you can see, the knob defines the n value, and the operation to define the thickness of our quantization mask are the one we just saw on the booklet panel. But this is the only thing in common. The first difference is that we can set two different n values per each circuit, meaning that we can have more voltages in the first one and less in the second one, or vice versa. The second huge difference is that these random voltages are tuned to musical intervals, namely semitones for the 2 to the nth power circuit and octaves for the n plus 1, according to the volt per octave standard. Having semitones and octaves can be helpful in quite some circumstances, and we will see them later on when we will start patching. The third main difference is that the 266 increased the density of the quantization grid by adding at least a significant bit. The grid could have had a density of two values with only one active bit, up to 64 values with uh, six active bits. In the SAPEL, the quantization grid has a fixed resolution of 6 bits and a fixed depth of 64 semitones, so the knob defines the number of random semitones by regulating the amplitude of the incoming quantized signal. In other words, the 266 defined how many values should be generated within all the voltage range, while SAPEL progressively increases the span of the random voltages. In this way, with low N values, we can achieve both fewer and lower voltages, and the higher the the N value gets, the higher the voltages. Since we are defining the amplitude and not the bit depth, with the 2 to the nth circuit we can achieve some sets of values that can stand in between the powers of 2. The point of the interface is that the increment of random voltages is exponential, but if we set the knob here or here, we can obtain respectively more or less values than 16. Let's try these circuits together. To start, we can pass the 2 to the nth power quantized output to Brainsource CV input. When the N knob is low, we hear mainly one note, but sometimes another note a semitone higher may appear. As we rotate the knob, we increase the number of possible notes that may appear, and their pitch becomes progressively higher. If we use the N plus 1 output, we experience the same behavior but with octaves. We can combine these outputs with a precision mixer like the 333. 
Our pitch will now change by semitones according to the 2 to the nth power value, but such semitones will also change their octave according to the n plus 1 value. When we do FM patches, we may want to preserve a harmonic ratio between the carrier and the modulator oscillators. Transposing the modulator by one octave preserves such a harmonic ratio, so we can use a sapel to randomly change our modulator's octave and achieve some pleasant tones. In this patch, we use the sapel to clock the Usta sequencer so that the random voltages will happen at the same time as the sequence stages. Then we have two options. First, we can route the volt per octave signal from the carrier to the modulator through the Brensos integrator and then patch the N plus 1 signal to the green volt per octave input. As an alternative, we can use the 333 to duplicate the volt per octave signal, patch the first copy to the yellow volt per octave input, sum the N plus 1 output to the second copy through the semi-normalization on the 333, and then patch the sum to the green volt per octave input. This second solution can be more precise in some circumstances. Anyway, both these solutions work great and provide a randomized effect without any dissonance. The fact that Sapel quantized random outputs correspond to precise Western musical intervals should not force us to think about them as for controlling just the oscillator's pitch. The main feature of these circuits is that they allow us to control the number and magnitude of our random voltages, so we can apply them to whatever destination requires such a control. For example, we can route the 2 to the nth power output to Brainsos wave folder and use the N knob to increase the number of stages that the wave folder can have throughout the patch. The semitone information is not necessary here, and yet this behavior is possible with just these outputs here. We have already seen how the N plus 1 circuit outputs perfect octaves, or volt increments, according to the volt per octave standard. However, an octave jump is nothing but a frequency multiplication by 2. If we apply this concept to cyclical modulations like LFOs, we can use the N plus 1 output to multiply their frequency by 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on. In this patch, we can use the clock output to reset Falistri's LFO and use the N plus 1 output to double its frequency randomly with a pleasant ratcheting effect. Another thing that we can do is to invert the roles. We can take the end of fall output, which outputs a timing pulse at the end of every LFO cycle, and use it to trick Sapel. In this way, every cycle may have a different speed, and the result is a little bit wackier. You may have noticed that in every section, both the end knobs can be voltage controlled. Being able to define the N value automatically can open up more expressive possibilities, either with external controls or with some internal cross-patching. Let's see a couple of examples. Let's start with the most extreme example. For this patch, we are going to keep the N knob all the way down and use the sample and all output to control the N value. In this way, we added a further degree of unpredictability. At every clock impulse, as a sapel we have a different number of possible quantized output voltages to create. Even though the semitones are always the same, their presence over time is even more random. In this patch, we set Falistri as an LFO. We want to use the unipolar output since we are keeping the end knob all the way down and we need to work only upwards. If you want to know more about polarity, check out our talk about amplifiers and inverters. Once we patch the LFO to the end value, we can hear that the randomized value will increase in sync. For a 
more noticeable result, the sample and hold speed must be way faster than the LFO. We are using Sapel to clock the USTA also in this patch. What we can do is to write a slower sequence of arbitrary voltages that runs parallel to the main melody and use it to change the end value. Whenever this second sequence changes a state, it defines a new end value that in turn changes the randomization effect, which in this case applies to the FM modulation amount. At the very beginning of this video we briefly talked about the differences between probability distribution and quantization, but now it is time to expand the concept, since with Sapel it is possible to combine the two techniques. That is the fourth difference from the 266, because its two quantized random voltage circuit featured a fixed distribution, which was respectively flat and Gaussian. If we play with a fairly high N value on our Sapel, we can notice the Gaussian distribution that we were talking about in the previous video. The random voltages will tend to have a median intensity and concentrate towards the middle range. We can thus activate the probability distribution and fine-tune our randomness. Let's go back to the first patch with the quantized output supplied to the pitch. By activating the probability distribution we can choose the preferred range of these voltages. To better appreciate it we may need to use a fairly high N value. However, even with lower settings we can increase the probability of higher voltages appearing. That's it for today, we have seen a bit of a history of quantized random voltages and how we implemented them in Sapel's architecture. If you want to know more about Sapel or if you found this video useful, consider subscribing to our channel and staying in touch with us through our social media. 